We've got Artie Hoffman on the line with us. And uh, first off, Artie, thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's it really is. It's my pleasure to be here. And, and Artie, where when when you talk about uh, psychic being a psychic, when when did you know that you, that that you had a special ability? Uh, when I was twenty seven um, is when I found out. Um, I had I had nothing before at the age of twenty seven, and um, I. You know, I was like your regular average Joe, and nobody in my family has what I have. And um, one day, you know, I had everything going right in my life at the time, but I was very unsatisfied inside. I was, yeah, I was about 27, yeah, I was 27 years old, very frustrated in my life. And um, I'm having a little conversation with God, and I said, God, I need clear answers. And I said, please don't scare the hell out of me when you give me those answers. And uh, all of a sudden I, I go into my kitchen and there's a, I look at my junk mail and there's a postcard there and it said, how would you like to develop your psychic ability and intuitiveness? Go to the Edgar Casey Foundation in Virginia Beach. And um, I said, wow, I didn't learn how to do it. I figured you had it or you didn't. So I asked my wife, who was my wife at the time, want to go to this? Looks pretty interesting. I wasn't looking at it like it was the answer to my prayers. I, I did it just for shits and giggles. And so she said, I don't care about that. She goes, you can go if you want. I'm not interested. I said, all right. So I went away for that one weekend. They taught you how to open up your heart and mind to be 100% unconditional. And they broke us up into little groups. There was 50 of us in this one large room, and they were, for all, we were from all different parts of the country. And um, so people were telling me how accurate I was with my, with my thoughts. They said, whatever thought you get for the other person, don't judge it. Don't worry about it if you don't understand it. Just say what's on your mind. And so when I was with the person, whoever I was with, I would tell people what's on my mind. And people were telling me that I was pretty accurate. And I was like amazed that I could actually meet somebody who I never met before and tell them, certain little things about themselves that I never knew before. And uh, it was really, really exciting. So when I went home after that weekend seminar, I got myself a deck of spiritual cards and I was reading for friends and family for the next few years, just for the fun of it. And people were telling me how accurate I was. And so um, I got to a point in my life where I made some investments. And I needed to make some extra money. Uh, to support my investments. And um, so I'm sitting on the couch and I'm thinking to myself, what can I do to make some extra money other than my regular job that I was doing? Because I also own my own window cleaning power washing business. And I've had that for 36 years. And it's called Peeping Tom's Window Cleaning. How do you like that? <laughs> it shows your sense of humor. There you go. You got to have a sense of humor if you're going to hire me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and on the card, on the card, it literally says binoculars not included. <laughs> so here I am. I'm sitting on the couch, and and I said, you know what? I know how to do readings. Uh, I'll just throw an ad in the paper, and it said, if I don't pull through, no charge, because I didn't want people to think that I was ripping them off if I wasn't pulling through. But ninety percent of the people paid me, and and my career took off just like wildfire, just word of mouth. And uh, little by little, it just kept on getting more and more momentum. And I've been on major popular radio stations. I've been on Fox TV. I performed at Trump casinos in Atlantic city. Um, I was asked to perform at the palace of Versailles in France. And um, yeah, so it was really cool. Around 30 years old, um, my late twenties, early thirties, I was doing stand up comedy for a little bit in New York and I didn't feel comfortable doing that. I mean, I was always known as a funny guy, but I didn't feel comfortable being up on stage trying to be funny or to, to be funny. It just wasn't my thing. But when I speak about spirituality, I'm very comfortable speaking in front of a large group of people because it's not about me. It's not about trying to make people laugh. It's about sharing important information to people and, um, yeah, and giving them beautiful words of wisdom and I'd be channeling it all. And, um, you know, so many people have, have uh, come up to me, thanking me 
for giving them such insight and to make such a change in their life. So, yeah, so it was really, really cool. And um, like I said, I just felt very grateful for having such a beautiful gift. And, you know, it's not that I'm more special than anybody else. It's just that I had a desire of wanting to learn more and more about it. And the more you get into anything, the better you're going to be become. So it's like, you know, some people say, oh, Artie, you're so lucky, you know, that you have a gift and that God speaks to you or the angels speak to you. And I wish I had that. And I always tell people it's not who does God choose to speak to because God speaks to everyone. You know, the angels speak to everyone. It's just who chooses to listen. Now, and that's the key thing. How, how hard was it for you to, 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 to take the reality in whenever you finally opened up and, and you got the realization? Oh, it was like right away. It was, it was like from that one weekend seminar. It was like at the seminar. And then when I went home, I mean, I got amazed every single time I told somebody and made a prediction about the future, that what was going to happen. And it actually happened. I said, holy crap. And I, I, I would just, I would be amazed because I thought I was just like a little schoolboy telling little white lies to people, just telling them my thoughts and what they want to hear or what I just, I literally thought most of the time I was just making up stories. And then people would be telling me that all this stuff came true. And then the uh, same thing with lottery numbers. I'd be giving people lottery numbers and, uh, you know, people ask me for it. I can't give it. But while I'm in a reading, if it comes through, then I share it with everybody. But um, I've easily given out over 100 winning lottery numbers or gambling situations or investments with people over the years. And, um, you know, but it has to come to me naturally. And, uh, yeah, so there's lots of really, really cool stories. Um, I'll share a few of them with you, if you don't mind. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to ask you to share it, just a, just a few of those. So there was a girl who walks into my place. You know, because people say, you know, are things predestined to happen or do we have a choice? And it's actually a little of both. Uh, there are certain things that are predestined to happen. Come hell to high water, they're going to happen. And um, then there are other times where you have a choice. You know, when you have a heads up in advance of, of what to expect, you have free will of choice of what you choose to do. And... Um, so there are times where people will ask me, hey, Art, you know, what do you see for my relationship? Well, I said, well, if you stay, this is what's going to work. This is what's going to happen. If you choose to leave, this is what's going to happen. If you go with this guy, this is what's going to happen. If you go by yourself, this is what's going to happen. All right, well, what do you see me doing? I said, I don't know. I said, it's your free will and choice. I just told you what to expect according to your choices. So sometimes it goes like that, and other times it's just black and white. This is what I see happening. So... um any case, um, this girl walks into my place, and as soon as she walked into my place, she said, Artie, because I've been thinking about you every single day for the last two years. I go, really? And, uh, I mean, not that I was, you know, I was flattered that she's, you know, somebody's thinking about me that much, but not on a sexual note, but I was flattered. So, so um, I said, all right, so, you know, why were you thinking about me for the last two years? She says, I came here and I saw you two years ago. I don't remember who I read for. I don't remember what I say to people. Um, most psychics, mediums, don't have a good memory. They don't. It's just like when we're with the person in the moment, that's it. We disconnect. I, at least for me, I could speak. I disconnect because I don't want to be emotionally attached to anybody's garbage or, 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 or karma or whatever. So I'm with you in the moment. I'm giving you all this information. And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm in a different state of mind. So this girl comes in and she says, you read for me here two years ago. And I didn't remember that. And we sat at this table and you held my hand. And you said to me, you started singing the song to me. As soon as you held my hand, you started singing the song by ACDC. Highway to hell. I'm going to highway to hell. You started singing that song to me as soon as you held my hand. And you said to me, if I don't stop doing what I'm doing, I'm going to get caught real soon. And uh, I'm going to end up in jail. And you, you kept on advising me, stop doing what I should not be doing. And she goes, and a week later, I got caught at doing something I should not have been doing. And I got thrown in jail for two years. And every day I woke up. And I, you know, she went to jail and she was every day I woke up and I said, why didn't I listen to Artie? Why didn't I listen to Artie? And, um, you know, 
So she had a choice. You know, there are times where I might see accidents in the future. It doesn't have to happen because I'm giving me a heads up to be defensive. You know, um, there is a lady, you know, I wrote a book called Angels and Answers. And this story's in the book. Now, and, is, it, um, is it hard for you to share bad news, if you will? I mean, obviously, you, you, you want to try to, to, to lift people's spirits, but does it get easier with time, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Well, you know, it's not so much as what you say, but it's how you say and how you come across. So if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to deliver, I'll say hard news. I call bad news hard news. If I deliver hard news to someone then I usually give them the solution on how to overcome it or what to expect so that they could. So I put them, I put people in an emotional, healthy state of mind. So I, I give them, so when I see shit about to happen with them, what I do is I, um, you know, I tell them the antidote. I tell them, you know, what to do or how to do it. Now, when you're emotionally invested in someone or something, just because I'm giving you the answers, doesn't mean you're still going to do the right thing because you're emotionally invested. The ego wants what it wants. So, you know, um, you know, but logically from my point of view, from what I see, from what the spiritual world is telling me, you don't want to do this and you don't want to do that. Or maybe you want to try this. You want to try that. So, you know, like I said, people will go after what it is they really want. But if you're smart, You'll listen to your gut. You'll listen to what I have to say or what the spiritual world has to say, you know, because I'm just the messenger, you now, know, so. Uh, yeah. Now, Artie, is it, is it something that, that, that you're able to channel at will or is it something that, uh, that, that it comes upon you and, and you maybe aren't expecting it? Well, when I first started this, it would just come to me out of left field. Uh, it wasn't at will. It just happened. I would get these thoughts and premonitions about people. That's how I met my second wife. Um, I kept on getting these premonitions about her. And and I was married at the time, and she was engaged at the time. And I said, there's no way I'm ever going to be with her, nor did I even think like that. We were just uh, friendly acquaintances at the time. And um, And I shared with her information, because when I was going to bed, I kept on getting messages. You got to tell her this. You got to tell her that. You got to tell her this. You got to tell her that. And like for two days in a row, I couldn't go to sleep because this spirit kept on telling me to tell her things. So I called, I called uh, my, well, she was my friend at the time who later on became my wife, but um, I called her up and I said, Kath, I said, um, I, I got some spiritual message for you. I said, it's none of my business. I said, do you want me to tell you what I saw or do you want me to just let it go? And she goes, no, go for it. So I started talking to her for like 10 minutes straight. I'm telling her all these things, what I'm getting. And she's just sitting there quietly listening to what I have to say. And we were talking by phone. I didn't, I wasn't with her in person. And so, and so I said to her after I got finished talking, I said, is there anything that I said that made sense to you whatsoever? Because I, I have no clue what I just told you. I, I'm only telling you these feelings and these emotions and what you're going through. And she goes, it's really interesting. She goes, you're telling me things only I know. She goes, my best friends don't know. My fiance doesn't know. My parents, she goes, nobody knows what you just told me except me and you. And uh, I got a shot throughout my spine in that moment when she told me that. And then um, I started, you know, developing feelings for this girl. And uh, so I met up with another friend of mine who is also very psychic. And I felt like crap because now I'm with a, a woman who I really didn't want to be with at the time. And it wasn't because of this girl because I've already had these strange, weird feelings going on about my relationship. I like. You know, I was there, I was trying to make it work, and it was just very difficult for me emotionally. And I got tired of playing the game. I really did. But then I go to meet my other friend who was very psychic. Her name was Charlotte. And I knock on her door, and I'm feeling like crap inside because I don't know what to do with these emotions or feelings. So as soon as she opened the door, she looked at me. She goes, hey, Art, how you doing? You look great. I go, I do. She goes, congratulations. You look like you just met your soulmate. I go, really? 
she blew me out of the water. And then she told me what was, what was to be with my relationship and how I was going to end up being with this one. I said, I cannot see that at all. I could not see myself getting a divorce. I couldn't see myself being with this other girl. She was like flawlessly drop dead gorgeous. She was a runner up for Miss Wisconsin back in the day, literally. And uh, she was a world travel model. I said, there's no way someone like me is going to get a girl like her. And lo and behold, thank God for personality. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, I mean, not that I'm, I mean, put it this way. It's not that I'm a bad looking guy in a sense, you know, but I, I, I never put myself as a GQ, but, um, you know, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, just life just so happens that, that we ended up being together and it was pretty cool. You know, and like I was saying to you, I started talking to you about my, my book. I wrote a book called Angels and Answers. You know, you can get it on uh, my website, artiehoffman.com. But so in my book, Angels and Answers, um, there's a story in there. And I'm doing a reading for this one girl at a party. I, I do parties also besides private readings that I do for the public. I'm just as accurate over the phone as I am in person. So if people called me up for a reading... I would be just as accurate over the phone as I am in person. So anyway, uh, so I'm doing a party. I call them arty parties. So I'm doing a party at this one person's house. And I'm reading for this one lady. Now, when I connect to the other side, when I'm connecting to people's deceased loved ones, that's known as a medium. A psychic predicts the past, present, and future and will tell you outcomes. A medium is someone who communicates to the deceased, people who passed away. And I communicate with angels. So when I communicate to the deceased, to the to uh, the other side, I'll tell you, you know, let me look at a picture of whoever you want to talk to. And when I look in their eyes, they start communicating thoughts to me. So I'm looking at this girl's mother's picture. And at the end of her reading, it was a half hour was up. And I'm giving her all this information about her mother and about her life and yada, yada, yada. So at the end of the reading, she says to me, she goes, you know, Art, she goes, I'm having a really hard time believing the fact that you're actually connecting to my mother, that you're talking to my mother. I said, well, I can only tell you what the spiritual world shares with me. She goes, well, she goes, some of the things that you told me were specific, you know, that I give you credit that, you know, that no one else would know, but, you, you know, that you're telling me. But um, also, you know, you told me some general things that could relate to anybody, but, but it did have to do with my mom. And she goes, but I don't know. I'm just having a hard time believing that you're actually communicating to my mother herself. So I said, well, I said, let me look at your mother's picture one last time. I'll see what she could come up with. So I looked at her mother's picture and I said to her, your mom is showing me cows. She goes, what do you want me to do with that? I said, I don't know. Your mom's showing me cows. So in my eyes mind, I saw all the cows getting up and they were all mooing. And so I looked at her and I said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but moo. And she started to cry. She started to get all teary eyed. And I go, what's the matter? And she points to her mother's picture and she said, that's her name. I go, what are you talking about? Her name's Muriel, but everyone called her moo. I said, there you go. Here's your picture. Now get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Artie, if, if folks want to find more information, like you said, not only about the book, but uh, about your readings and uh, about shows, I know eventually some shows are, are you have got to be coming back soon, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I do a, a Sunday night Facebook live show. Every Sunday night I do free readings for the public. called It's called Angels and Answers. So if you went to my website, Artie Hoffman, Angels and Answers, You'll see, you'll see um, my Facebook live show that I, I read for people for an hour for free every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And, um, yeah, so my, my website is artiehoffman.com. Uh, you could email me, artiehoffman at Gmail, if you want to get a hold of me personally or if you want to have a reading or a party. Uh, I also do fundraisers, and uh, my uh, number uh, – I mean, my uh, – my email is artiehoffman at gmail. My website's artiehoffman.com. And my phone number to reach me at is 732-778-7173. So that's the way to get a hold of me. And if you want the book or if you want to have a party or a reading or speaking. so And I have fun with it. 
I do have fun with it. Um, you know, when I'm up there speaking, I'm a psychic and I'm like Billy Crystal all in one. I'm I I joke around a lot while I give the messages and uh but when it comes to real serious serious stuff, I mean, I do get to the point, you know. So And again, but, um yeah, it, it's it's very cool. I feel very blessed. And again, the website is uh, ArtieHoffman.com. And uh, Artie, I appreciate you taking some time to, to get introduced. Uh, hopefully we can have a, a, a revisit in a couple of weeks, maybe in a month, and, uh, and have you back on. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Well, Artie, you have a great rest of your week, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again real soon. Sounds like a plan, my friend. You take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. And our final guest of the episode is legendary Olympic skater Scott Hamilton. We'll be talking about his Live Your Days platform. Always good to visit with our friends. We've got Olympic gold medalist Scott Hamilton on the line. And Scott, uh, good to talk to you again, my friend. Well, it's great to talk to you. This is awesome. What a great day today is. That that's right, and and Scott, I want to talk about. Uh, but boy, this is timely as well. The, uh, the the Live Your Days platform that launched on Tuesday, and Scott, where did this come for for you, or is this just kind of the mantra that you've been living by anyway? Well, it's you know, kind of. I guess when your days are threatened, you kind of appreciate them a little bit more. And I always like to you know sort of mention my unique hobby of collecting life-threatening illnesses and. Um, it's not one I recommend. I think stamps and coins, especially coins now, I guess, um, would be a much better hobby to get into. But, you know, it came out of um, four years ago I was diagnosed with my third brain tumor. And uh, and it was really interesting. Um, this one, you know, the first one ignited my faith. The second one just felt like I got kicked in the stomach. And the third one, was it, it, my response to it was just really different. It was, it was like, okay, I'm not symptomatic. They found it on a scan. So um, I think I'm just going to press pause right here, right now. And there was something in the back of my mind that just it really just gets strong. And so I, I didn't know if it meant physically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. So I kind of chose all the above, and I just decided to just to live and just to you know, get healthy and, and be busy and be productive. And and um, it was amazing that I did an interview for People.com and right right after the diagnosis. And whatever I said, however I said it, you know, I, I chose to be joyful in that reality that I'm dealing with another brain tumor, especially after the, the previous one was one surgery that became nine. And it was a really rough, rough patch. But this time, I, I just chose to look at it differently. And and I, I in, in that interview, I reminded people that you know our our bodies are incredibly fragile, um, but they're also phenomenally resilient, but ultimately temporary. And so we've got to just take advantage of our days. We got to live our days. And it was funny that you know we thought maybe if we got like ten thousand shares on that on that interview that we were doing our job and we're you know helping people. It was shared 35 million times. <laughs> you know, so I was like, okay, we're, there's something here that needs to be heard. And, and it didn't feel right. You know, we, we created the Live Your Days platform then, and it just didn't feel right to do it then. It just there's a lot of other things going on. And, and so during COVID, um, you know, the people I was working with four years ago, we reconnected and we said, you know, now. Now, now we need to really build and present this thing because people are suffering and they need to be encouraged and they need to be reminded that, you know, so much of our lives right now is that the tail's wagging the dog and, and man, no, we're the dog and, and we wag the tail. And so it's, we need to, you know, just be reminded and rise up and, and just understand the power and the opportunity that each day presents and, and to not let it slip by. You know, you know, we need to live our lives fully. Um, and, you know, if we, if we can, you know, collect our, our really great days, it becomes a, a life well lived, you know. And, and so um, Live Your Days is an encouragement digital platform, and it's a podcast, and it's a store, and it's, uh, 
you know, where we can, you know, have these things that remind us to live our days. And, and the store part of it is really cool because the shop, I should say, uh, because, um, the, you know, percentage of the proceeds goes directly to cancer research and my CARES foundation. So, you know, we're trying to do good for people and, and in that do good in the community and, and try to save lives and, and to remind people that this is, this is precious. Today is, amazing and incredible and an opportunity and and uh we just gotta we gotta take it by the horns and and, and just make it happen and, and scott how have uh, how have you personally been been living your days i mean i i know it's been uh distant for everybody but uh but just an example for for folks to even when they can't get out and do anything uh maybe an example of something that you guys were able to fill time with well, you know, it's funny. I, I travel too much. I work too much and I take on too much. And, uh, when, when the kind of the quarantine lockdown happened, oh my goodness, uh, my, my direct day to day interaction with my children was spectacular. We, we have dinner on the table every night. We cook together. We, we play cutthroat uno. We, we would share, you know, kind of our, our joys and fears, and and it was so important that that time happened, especially now because they're high schoolers and you know tweens, and um, and it was just such a precious time for us, and and we chose to to take advantage of it and to do really fun things. You know, I'd, I'd binge watch a show with my youngest son, and then we you know finish that one and we'd start a new one, and you know we we would just go on walks, and and it was just. It was just amazing, and it was great. And in that, you know, we're building Live Your Days while we're doing that. And and it was just, you know, a reminder um, that, you know, we've got to encourage each other, and we've got to, you know, um, uh, invest in each other. And, you know, my coach would always tell me the human is a social animal. We cannot survive without each other. And, and you know, during these lockdown quarantine periods, you know, we, we a lot of people were forced into isolation, and it's unhealthy, and it's... And it's awful. So building this platform, we really wanted to um, just pour into other people's lives and remind them, you know, who they are and what their, you know, whatever their mission is in life, they should get to it. And, and um, you know, if you're going to build a, a, a strong foundation in your life, it's on four legs, right? One is physical. you got to take care of your body. Another is emotional. you got to take care of your heart. Um, and the way that, you know, you're able to appreciate yourself. Another one is intellectual and be interested in things and be interested in growing your understanding of, of you know, the world around you. And the last one is spiritual and you know, really, really celebrating who you are um, to a living, loving creator and, you know, how um, every life is meant to be redeemed and celebrated and uh and and lived joyfully and productively and abundantly. So, you know, we we really um, had a great time building this. There's a 30 day challenge in there where people can sign up, and every day they'll they'll get a uh, another challenge that's meant to kind of shore them up and and to nourish them in some really profound way. So we're really excited. And Scott, I want to make sure and let our listeners know where they can uh, where they can get in touch with the uh, the Live Your Days platform as well. Well, it's liveyourdays.com. I mean, we were really lucky that we got the URL. <laughs> so it's liveyourdays.com. And in there, you know, you can navigate to the different platforms, things that I do. Um, like my, you can navigate to my CARES Foundation from there. And, and uh, you know, in this time, we've seen so many nonprofits um, just crumble. And, you know, we were really lucky that, you know, we're small enough to survive this, but we're large enough that we've had, you know, great impact. And, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Our, you know, the first episode was kind of me introducing the Live Your Days, um, platform. And then next week, um, Robin Roberts is going to be helping us celebrate, uh, breast cancer awareness. And, um, after that, my dear friend, Marcus Whitney, who's an entrepreneur, who's one of the owners of the Nashville Soccer Club, um, and then after that, you know, I mean, we got, you know, Kevin Nealon and Bart Miller to Mercy Me and Christy Yamaguchi and uh, all these incredible perspectives and, and kind of against all odds lives that they've lived. You know, how do you become an Olympic ladies champion when you're born with club feet? 
And, you know, um, how do you become uh, a comedic actor without even really knowing how to tell a joke? And how do you become a host of Good Morning America? (laughs) You know, when you're, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible to hear these life stories and, and um, and to be inspired, you know, by the fact that putting one foot in front of the other, you know, pretty soon you've you know you've kind of finished a marathon, you know, and and uh, it's a, it's just an amazing platform, and I and I hope it does the work that we've designed it to do. Well, Scott, I'm sure it will, and uh, appreciate all the work that you do to give back, and always great to visit with you, Scott. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and look forward to visiting again real soon, my friend. Well, God bless you and and, uh, live your days. Again, thanks for joining us for this episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. And if you ever have a comment, a question, or anything else you'd like to know, find me on Instagram, Twitter, and on my Facebook page, at GQ with Cam. If you'd like to help with the funding for this podcast, feel free to click the support tab and follow the instructions. Also, if you have a special guest idea, be sure and drop me an email, Cameron at KWHW.com. We'll see you for episode 29 coming up tomorrow.